Good evening. This is another podcast from Dr. Lamar uh, from Lamar Chiropractic. We just finished today, and today's topic is going to be inflammation. Um, we last stopped um, our story um, back on autoimmune, and they're kind of related. You know, we talk about diet and autoimmune disease. Um, inflammation is directly a- attached to it. Uh, in this slide, you'll see some of this you'll, as you go down. These slides are used as references. You can go back to this anytime and read what the information is. It's all good information. It's all been vetted. Uh, you can pass it on to your friends. The role after 30 years of chiropractic care is more educational for me now. It's to really make an impact on the patients that I see and leaving my mark, uh, hopefully, in healthcare and showing people that you can age and age well. You can do better. This idea that we're going to be all infirmed and sitting in nursing homes and, you know, wearing diapers, I don't believe that. My grandmother came off a boat from Sicily and she drove until she was 92 and and passed in one day at 97. She took one pill, hydrochlorothiazide, her entire life, um, and she did really well. She was also 5'2 by 5'2". The, the idea of size, shape, and age has nothing to do with functioning. And this is what we talk about in the inflammatory process. It's inflammation that causes disease. It's inflammation that stops you. It's inflammation that will break your body down. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is the, the biological response that's triggered by the immune system. Something pisses off your body, and it wants to figure out what's going on. It's going to try to heal it. So the idea is to figure out what your trigger is. Is it, is it a chemical response to something? Is it a physical response to something? Uh, anything can cause inflammation. And then you've got to figure out where the inflammation is coming from. One of the most significant things that I, I took from these slides was the uh, World Health Organization ranks chronic diseases as the greatest human threat to health. Research has concluded that chronic inflammatory diseases are the most significant cause of death in the world. This is what everybody's trying to control is inflammation. You know, I have two patients right now that are uh, dealing with COVID and I send my prayers out for them and and my blessings towards them and their lungs are full of fluid. They've got pneumonia. So a lot of the procedures now are doing a plank procedure. Having them do a plank position like in Pilates The lungs come out of the fluid, they kind of drain so they can breathe. Well, when you go to the chiropractor and you get that thoracic adjustment and you're mobilizing the thoracic area, that's going to lead to less inflammation. That's the the role that chiropractic can can have in reducing inflammatory responses and how it can affect other things. You know, do we treat pneumonia as chiropractors? No, but we can treat the, the effects of the body so it can manage the disease process and reduce the inflammation. If you have COPD, an adjustment's gonna help the lung functions because you're gonna be able to move the thoracic cage. And when you go into somebody as a, like a chiropractor and he's assessing you for this inflammation, the inflammatory response, that's what the adjustment's gonna do and that's what he's gonna tell you. And everybody has a specific response to inflammation. The next slide will talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is inflammation is the body's response to harm. It's going to tell you. It's the, the, the idiot light on the dashboard. You just have to pay attention. A lot of the patients coming in, and I'll tell you, there's two models, boy and girl. The boy one is kind of tough. You know, it goes in one ear and out the other. So when the kids were growing up, my boys, I'd put my cup one ear with my hand and say, hey, pay attention. I didn't want it to escape. And as they got older, dad, stop with the hand. The idea is that as a a male, I don't want to leave five or six or eight years earlier than my wife. I I should be at the same level of life and the same level of functioning. Just because I'm a male, I shouldn't be more inflamed. I shouldn't be less prone um, to medical care. So as guys, we have to pay more attention. We have to pay, pay attention to those lights. The bad part of inflammation, long-term chronic disease. That's the ugly part. When you come in and I, and I assess you and I look for swelling in the legs, I'm looking for the swelling because your back isn't moving or your spine isn't moving properly. Your leg muscles are too tight. You're going to stop the fluid from draining. You're going to st- stop the vascular system from bringing blood to the heart. 
all of these things create inflammation, both at the heart level as well as the leg level. So a lot of patients will come in and we're going to do an adjustment for the back to mobilize the spine to stop the inflammation there. And we're going to address with therapy the bad inflammation in the legs to reduce the swelling there. So we're looking at an inflammation at multiple places. So again, what causes inflammation? Lots of things. Exposure to irritants, autoimmune, biomechanical. That's what I focus on. Form and function. You're supposed to be able to move your arms out to both sides equally. You're supposed to be able to bend and touch your toes. You're supposed to be able to lie down and not hurt. When your posture is off, it's just a reflection of how the frame is bent. Going to the chiropractor is going to facilitate an adjustment, which is going to reduce the inflammatory response by having the gears work well together. And again, you might have a bent spine in the neck that causes irritation in the low back. We're going to assess that. You can have inflammation in multiple areas of the body. So we're going to address this with examination. Again, the most significant change to the world health is the inflammatory response. When you go to the hospital and you're getting an IV, lots of times they're putting a steroid in there, they're controlling the inflammation. You pull your back out like we did shoveling snow recently around here, you go to Costco or Safeway and you get a non steroidal anti inflammatory, taking away inflammation. When you come to see me and I assess your body, I'm going to say put a coal pack on it out of the refrigerator, not the freezer, as anti inflammatory. We're all doing the same work, we're all stopping inflammation. And, and inflammation, like I said, can be good and bad, like we saw before. It's a long-term chronic inflammation. Nothing should be the same. Your body's always changing. And for me, um, the signs of chronic inflammation is the daily occurrence. Um, we're seeing back pain. We're seeing depression. Well, we're seeing weight gain. And you guys know about me. I'm not a size person. Just because you're heavier doesn't mean you're infirmed. Just because you're lighter doesn't mean you're healthier. Form and function. And the other thing too is very few people around here will bring their child to a chiropractor. And I think that's sad because they're not getting their children evaluated for these chronic inflammatory conditions that are set up from poor biomechanics and even trauma. You know, if you didn't send your child to the dentist and all of a sudden at 30 was the first time he went to the dentist, he's going to need major work. That's two 1930s. We have to start this concept of anti-inflammatory womb to the tomb, right when the kids come out. You know, no child should be eating, eating off the children's menu. It, it's just too poor. The American diet is too sad. Um, we want to, when they fall, just don't brush them off, assess it, put a cold pack on it. That cold is going to affect the body's response to the immune and it's going to make a smaller dent or a smaller irritation to the body. I was just watching a documentary where they're looking at um, medieval people and they could tell when they were uh, in the wintertime, when they were, had less food by the striations in the bone. They actually could tell nutritional values and inflammatory values by bone growth. This is middle-aged people. We're finding that out now. We all knew that rickets back in the olden days was lack of vitamin C. So we just have to be more, pay more attention to what's out there, our symptoms, you know? And how do these symptoms relate to inflammation or disease? You know, like I said, no, I don't treat heart attacks, but I treat people with hearts. My wife says from New York, mine's cold. My response though, it's still beating. And I want it to beat. That thoracic adjustment is gonna facilitate movement so that my head doesn't create more force on my upper torso and my lungs and my heart, which beat out, are gonna be more um, resilient to movement because the, the rib cages are moving easier. So yes, the thoracic adjustment can lead to better heart health. So that's what you're looking for. If you have a weakened heart and you have less pressure on it because you're getting an adjustment in the thoracic area and all the bones and muscles are moving, it's going to create less inflammation, less inflammation, less heart disease over a long period of time. You know, when they talk about chronic inflammation and obesity, I'm not so worried about, again, size. I mean, we have to, you really have to be assessed. God makes watermelons and God makes string beans. Just because you're larger doesn't mean you have an issue. 
I want to assess you. I want the doctors to assess you. You know, like I said, my grandmother coming over from Sicily was a, was a large girl, but she was healthy. She drove until she was 92 and passed in one day at 97. So again, you want to assess the respiratory system, the cardiac system. You want to look at your legs. You want to look at your body parts. How are they moving? And treat the inflammation. Get an adjustment. Use a cold pack. The risk factors, everything can be a risk factor. I mean, the idea behind it is we're all living in this crazy world. And rather than worry about labels and, and um, you know, what people are doing, figure out for yourself, what do you want to do? It's easy for me to get a cold pack out of the refrigerator. It's easier for me now to change and do some stretching like yoga or Pilates um, that will decrease the irritation to the musculoskeletal system. It's easy to go to the chiropractor. You get an adjustment. Some chiropractors, I say to people, you can have five chiropractors. I have five primary care physicians, you know? Everybody does something a little different. My style is to assess the body, teach you what I can teach you that you can do at home, and I do therapy to the muscles. I want to change the frame and condition the musculature around it so we change the pattern to reduce the inflammation long-term. A lot of chiropractors just adjust. And let's talk about the adjustment and inflammatory response and what the whole deal is. The, the idea of an adjustment is to create movement of a joint. When the joints don't move, the body be, becomes inflamed or irritated. All the fluid goes around the nerve that comes out of the holes between the vertebra, and that fluid compresses and irritates and burns the nerve. If I adjust the vertebra, decompress that fluid, and open up those holes, then the nerve has a chance to breathe. You have 31 pairs of nerves. Each nerve comes out left and right and has three jobs. Sensory, pain, muscle or motor, and then the insides. Then we regionalize. Neck, your neck does everything from the diaphragm up. Low back does bowel, bladder, reproduction, legs. Everything else is in the middle. So you might have a twisted low back or a scoliosis that leads to a pinched nerve that leads to bladder irritation. So by treating the spine, reducing the inflammatory response, conditioning the muscles around, all of a sudden the bladder symptoms go away. Or if you're an older, an older guy, you come in and you have atrophy of the muscles of the legs, I might say, listen, well, you have to get your prostate examined because you don't want to have a neurogenic changes that leads to prostate issues because the low back does bowel, bladder, reproduction, legs. And you can have inflammation, remember, not just in the out part, the sensory or the motor part, but also on the insides. That's the inflammation around the heart, the lungs, the prostate, all of those other areas. The good news is we can fix a lot of things. And that's why what I talk about. You know, when we talk about the diet, intermittent fasting, did you have a protein? Are you carb rich? What does your A1C look like, you know? It's really easy for you to go to the doctor, regardless of your size, and say, listen, I learned from Dr. Lamore about my A1C. I want to know, is it below 5.6? It's an easy number to know. That's the way you're ma managing sugars over a long period of time, 90 days. And you can, you can then address the issue, if you're not, by changing diet or using berberine. You come in and you ask me about berber berberine, all the functional medicines doctors know about it. It's a way, a supplement that can aid in helping metabolizing sugars. Some people want to change the diet. Some people would like to take berberine. Some people might use intermittent fasting or a ketogenic diet. So again, the good news is we can make these changes that are specific to you. All we got to do is talk to me, the chiropractor, to the medical doctor, and know a couple of factors. And if you walk around saying, hey, I'm reducing inflammation, you are going to extend your life. Remember, you don't have to age poorly. I have a young Marine, a female Marine, who's doing exceptional work. She's got some issues. She's starting when she's in her mid-20s. And I guarantee by the time she's well in her 90s, even with her instability, she's going to be better shaped than most because her concept is that she's going to age better, not worse, by making a couple of good decisions learning about inflammation, how do I control it, diet, exercise, chiropractic, cold packs, supplementation, talking with the medical doctor. Again, 
I know a lot of people that come through here and I'll say, well, who's your neurologist or who's your oncologist and, and who's your, your cardiologist? I had a cardiologist at 39. Why? Because my father had a heart attack at 40, died at 50. Acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. And when I went to see him, I didn't want to have an inflammatory response in my heart. He thought I was fooling around. He said, nobody ever does this. Well, I don't care what other people do. Guys have heart attacks between 40 and 50. I don't need to have a heart attack for a heart doctor to examine me. You don't have to have back pain to go to a chiropractor. And that's why, like I said, nobody sends their kids in and it's ridiculous. Not even to me, to any chiropractor. You can't, you can't be 40 years old and all of a sudden worry about function. You've got to address it earlier because this whole concept of inflammation is not just chemical, but it's also mechanical. Smoking. Oh, back in my day, everybody seemed to smoke. Uh, I don't know. And I always ask people, what's the number one cancer among smokers? And everybody says lung. No, that's like who, who's in Grant's tomb. It's too easy. The number one cancer among smokers is bladder. If you write down bladder cancer on a form, the doctor's going to go, how long do you smoke? Now, smoking is an easy way of saying that it's an irritant and creates inflammation. Yes. But I say to people, how many, how many times do you know, have you ever heard of bladder cancer among people and how many smokers do you know? So it's not always lock and key. We also have to talk about the amount. You know, the cowboys had a little pouch and they did one or two cigarettes a day. Might've been an irritant. You can't do three packs of Marlboro Reds and expect to be healthy and not create inflammation. So again, lifestyles are a thing. And you know, everybody talks about smoking and cancer. I don't hear about pot smokers dying of lung cancer. Yet I haven't heard any cancer among pot smokers. And you can't tell me smoking pot is any better than smoking cigarettes. It's different, but it's still smoking. You shouldn't smoke. The only thing in your lungs is, is, is air or oxygen. So again, I, I'm not going to debate the, the idea of smoking. I think it's a poor habit, but I think we can do, make better choices and, and worry about the bigger components. If somebody is going to recreationally smoke something and it's recreationally is very small, okay. But on the other hand, they're saying, I'm going to the chiropractor, which is not going to do, it might change neurology. I'm, I'm watch, watching my diet. I'm reducing my sugar. I'm not doing alcohol. Um, I'm not taking uh, recreational drugs. There's other things. I'm exercising and I'm getting sleep. Everybody forgets about sleep. The biggest, one of the biggest things to reduce inflammation is getting a night's sleep. I hear some of these guys sleep in three and four hours. It doesn't work. It might work short term, but it doesn't work long term. So see, this whole concept of inflammation is the key to everything. And that's why it followed the idea of auto, autoimmune, because autoimmune is your body turning on itself. So, Ta-da! Anti-inflammatory. Uh, we talk about this. And the anti-inflammatory diet is real easy for me. The idea is you want a protein, carb, and a fat. Protein, beef, poultry, beans, pork, fish, fat, olive oil, butter, animal fat. Everything else is a carbohydrate. Beer is a carbohydrate. Pasta is a carbohydrate. And you want to look at a, at a proportion of 40, 30, 30. 40% 40 protein, 30% carb, 30% fat. That's an anti-inflammatory diet. Real easy. We can call it different things, but you know, I was doing a little survey amongst my um, moms who are single moms and, and dealing with work and kids and everything else. And I asked them, do your kids have soup? And nine out of 10 said, no, the kids don't eat soup anymore. And that's the most nutrient dense food we have where you can get a protein, carb, and a fat. I mean, we all had schmaltz back in New York in the day. You put it on bread. Yeah, wonderful. You should try, all try it. But the idea is that these kids aren't getting that. They're not getting the, the nutrients and the diet that they need to grow. Remember, 0 to 20 you grow, 20 to 30 you mature, 30 on you die. Or you decline, my wife says. Decline. You don't have to come down like a rock. You can go out like a glider. And again, the literature says that you can be 120. So why are we only making 60 and 70 in inflammation? You know, we, we lost uh, Rush Limbaugh. He, he was famous for smoking cigars, a little on the fluffy side. I'm sure his diet wasn't anti-inflammatory. The average white guy lasts 84 and a half. So he lost like 15, 15 years he lost. He had a lot of money. I think he would have liked to stick around a while. 
maybe if he had changed by reducing his smoking and getting off the, the fatty foods and doing the anti-inflammatory diet, it would have made a better change. Again, it's all about inflammation. That's the key. How you can control it. What are you going to do in your life? The anti-inflammatory is one great way of doing it. The Mediterranean diet. I, like I told you, my grandmother, 92 she drove, 97 she passes. My great-grandmother, Carmela Lucia, had 15 children. She passed at 106. That's my norm. What did we eat? Mediterranean. You know, that's all I knew. Italian people, we, we don't eat cereal. I never had a steak until college. Didn't know what steak was. We had prosciutto and, and sausage. So the Mediterranean diet's a great way of doing um, a, a food or, or an anti-inflammatory diet. And you'll see here, Greek yogurt, strawberries. Um, my kids eat chicken noodle soup for breakfast because I, I want them to understand you need a protein, carbon, and fat at every meal, not just once a day. Proteins control water and the protein will get rid of that inflammation. So you can either eat a, a, a normal diet, protein, carbon, and fat, or take an Advil or, or take something stronger, but you pay a price for that. You're not gonna do bad by eating a Mediterranean diet, right? you're gonna pay a price with that Advil of shutting down your kidneys. Because the first thing that you stop with a kidney disease is salt and proteins because they, they beat the kidneys up. So again, this whole concept of anti-inflammatory, when you get that adjustment, you're mobilizing, you're reducing the inflammation. You're stopping the burn, the inflammatory response around the nerve. When you're eating anti-inflammatory, protein, carbon, and fat, or the Mediterranean diet, you're, you're doing anti-inflammatory. These are the habits that make you have long-term health. And again, let's reach for the stars. I mean, my God, people say to me, oh, I feel terrible at 50. I, you know, it, it's crazy. It's too old fashioned. You know, we should be reaching uh, 100, 105. The oldest living veteran up until a couple months ago was 114, uh, an African-American man, World War II-er, and he had bourbon and cigars. Imagine if he'd stopped, dropped the bourbon and the cigars, he might do a little better, but hell, 114 ain't bad, you know? Again, looking at the foods that cause inflammation, you don't have to be perfect. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking at a plan, you know, a plan that you can tell the chiropractor. You come in here and I, I care that you're hurt, but I, I care more about what are you doing to stop the hurt? And what am I teaching you? I have a role, every doctor, it means teacher. Every doctor has a role to teach you how to stay healthy, not just fix little problems here and there, but make sure that you have a happy and healthy life. And again, not worrying about size. I'm going to worry more about the child who's not having soup in a growth cycle because how is that going to affect him later? Is he going to develop cardiovascular disease because he doesn't have the proteins or he's not going to be able to build the musculature because he doesn't have the building blocks? because they're all into about carbohydrates. Or the old person who doesn't have teeth, who can't eat a piece of steak, that you say, okay, forget the steak, have hemp protein. That's a good part, there's a good part of hemp, right? Have the hemp protein, you can even have hemp, hemp ice cream for God's sakes. I don't care how you get that protein in, but that protein's gonna control the water and it's gonna stop the major diseases that are leading to dysfunction and, and death in America, which is crazy. Again, low glycemic index. You look up on the chart and they'll tell you what's good and bad based on your blood sugars. Everybody should know what their blood sugar is. I mean, the last time I checked mine was, it was 5.6. And again, everybody's heard me talk about the idea of a check or a measure of zero to 20 you grow, 20 to 30 you mature, 30 on you start to change. There's a growth weight there. I am, I checked. I am eight pounds from my high school college weight. And I keep it that way. So I, I add and subtract according to what my numbers is. I don't want to be past that. And again, you have to figure out when that growth weight occurred. You might graduated high school at 18 and were, you know, you're a buck 25, you entered the Marines, you got 22 inch arms, now you're 225. So that's your growth weight, 225. And you can't ungrow. If you grow 225, you can't ungrow. You can't be 230 and not without, gastric bypass or dramatic change, and it's really hard. But if you grow 220 and, you're, and you, then you become 60 and you say, I was 220 when I was 80, 18 or 20, and I'm now at 60, I'm 220, I'm going to say, oh, you're pretty damn healthy. Again, it's not a size thing. It's a function thing. And knowing what, where you are in that timeline. We all got that timeline. How are you going to create 
health by reducing inflammation. And where are you in that timeline? You know, are you teaching your kids about a diverse palate? You know, like my kids eat a calamari, you know, and my, my kid's cousin said, oh my God, it's bait food. It's still a protein. So again, they're used to certain things and you want to develop a diverse palate and an anti-inflammatory palate when they're young. So it's easier when you're older. So you have to pick out the, one, the best method for you. Again, low gly glycemic indexes, um, the paleo, hunter-gatherer, um, ketogenic. Now, ketogenic is a little hard on the heart and kidney, so you've got to understand it a little bit. It's a little, it's a little hard to deal with. 40-30-30, 40% protein, 30% carb, 30% fat. You know, if you're an over-the-road trucker, you, we do a la sheets. My kids couldn't eat a la sheets pretty darn healthy. They look for the protein, carb, and the fat. You know, and so you just have to have a way of introducing the concepts of anti-inflammatory into your lifestyle and so that they all add up to produce, produce health. And it has to be communicative. You have to be able to come into the medical doctor and the chiropractor and say, okay, this is what I had. This is why I'm doing it. Same thing with supplementations. You come in and you say, I'm taking fish oil. Okay, why? You know, because it, it's a blood thinner. And why are you doing it? You know, or you're taking berberine. Why are you doing it? You know, I take niacin. Niacin is a great way to raise HDL. So we talked to, I had a patient the other day telling her, talk to the pediatrician. Her child has a very low HDL. There's, that's God given your HDL. You can increase it by exercise. But if you go to Dr. Google and you Google, how do you raise HDL? You'll see niacin 30%. So if you have a, if you have a HDL of 30, you come in and talk. Or, or call me and we'll talk about what you can do to raise that exercise in terms of um, the, raising the HDL in terms of exercise, or maybe niacin is easier for you. And do you take a flush or a non-flush? These are things that, that all work, again, to reduce inflammation. Same thing with eating chicken noodle soup. And you know, when the kids don't eat soup, you take them for pho and you say, we're not going for soup, we're going for pond water. Everything that's in that soup is in a pond. The frog legs, the grass, the sticks, everything. They like pond water better than soup. So the idea is using information and teach them the, the best way to be healthy. I want this to be a resource. I want everybody. My expectation is 106. That's my great grandmother. Oh my God, she had 15 children. And if she can do 106, I'll be damned if I'm going to do any less. And I'm not going to give the wife any extra time. That's ridiculous. I'm going to be right there to the end. And so that's why today I had an anti-inflammatory diet. I had some chicken. I had my protein drink. This morning I had some, I did have some yogurt, some Greek yogurt. But I'm not a very big dairy person. Right? We, Italian people like sheep and goat, a different story. So again, anti-inflammatory, Mediterranean. Movement. I don't care what you do as long as you're moving, right? You go to the chiropractor, he's going to move your spine. And you shouldn't hurt when you move. So the idea behind it is to create a way so that you can, you can have a, in your day a way of exercising without exercising. Power plate, I love power plate. You come in here, we got a knockoff on power plate. You learn about power plate. It's the best way to exercise. It's a vibrating platform. We call it the shaking machine. You gotta watch your terminology. We gotta have a clean program here. So the shaking machine is a really good thing. Increases bone density, increases muscle mass, works on chemistry, power plate. Google it. We got knockoffs. The Chinese do a great knockoff on it. It's a great way of exercising. You can watch television, you can talk to the wife, and there you are shaking on this thing. You can do legs, you can do chest, you can do back. There's so many things you can do. The total gym, that's another way, you know? I like the total gym because you can do pull-ups. You could be 90 years old and pull up. And as you pull up and your, ass, your butt pulls down, you pull out the spine and you make it more flexible. Anti-inflammatory. There we go, right? Again, eating it, moving it so it's all anti-inflammatory. All of these ways that I'm trying to teach you is to educate you on how you're going to make yourself healthy. What am I going to put into my life so that I don't have the stress? You know, I have a 10-minute rule. You ask my kids and they'll say, dad, that's a 10-minute rule. I don't live more than 10 minutes from, from work. How come? Because when you lived in New York, if you were any more than 10 minutes, that you, you ain't getting there. Half the time with the traffic and whatever, you're not getting there. So I lived 10 minutes from work my whole entire life. 
If I, if I, I either move or I get a new job. Again, I have no stress. I buy a car, it lasts forever. I think I have 14,000 miles on my Corolla because I go seven minutes down the road. That's a way for me to manage my stress. When my wife said that we had to move, I said, no, I, I got a 10 minute rule. And that's it. I either get a, a new job, a new house, or maybe even a new wife. I don't know. But I'm going to manage my stress so that I make that 106. And it's silly, but it might, I communicated to my kids that 10-minute rule. I'll pay $100 to anybody who's, who says that's not, that's not gospel because my kids all know dad has that 10-minute rule. So this way, I don't have the stress of driving. You drive in New York and see what it's like. So you just come up with these ideas about how to do it. Yoga, P90X, Beach Body on Demand, $99. Fantastic. That's what I do. It kicks your butt. You, for 99 bucks, you can, you can do Zumba, you can do dance, you can do lots of other things. Yeah. Um, here in Fairfax, you come to the office. We love Fairfax Pilates. Um, Brittany will show you what to do. Um, Joe Pilates made it World War I, taught injured soldiers how to exercise on a bed. She's got the reformer. She can teach you a lot of things, not only to manage your stress in terms of the emotional stress, but the physical stress of sitting at that silly computer with this COVID stuff, right? The idea is you're communicating how you're getting well and use different things. I, I, I don't use the, the Zumba things in, in Beachbody and Demand. My daughter does. But I like the, the, the yoga. It's 90 minutes and you're sweating. And yoga does alignment, flexibility, and strength. Again, anti-inflammatory. That's the whole idea. Everything is based on the concept of how am I going to reduce that inflammation? What am I going to, to, to do to manage my body so that I reach the goal that I want to be? You, you're not going to reach it without having disease. I've had diseases. I've had issues. That's why I have five primary care physicians, a cardiologist, an oncologist, and gastroenterologist. I see them all. I, I'm worth it. And, and again, if I know what's wrong, I can attack it and fix it. That's the thing. We talk about anti-inflammatory and stress, acupuncture. It's real easy. Even acupuncture to sleep. Most of the people you needle and you, you got to wake them up. You go, hello. You know, because it puts your body in a state of rest. You need that downtime too. That's why we don't have radios in the waiting room or, or in, the, in the treatment rooms. You, you need to defrag from all the stimulation. I, I have to laugh because... The American Pediatric Group said that kids should watch the computer video screen like two hours a, a day, max. Try that in this day and age when you're doing virtual school, you know? A lot of people fudge things all of a sudden. It's like the, uh, the injections, you know, we talk anti-inflammatory. You know, Broadway Joe, Joe Namus, you know, they, they used to give injection after injection after injection and they realized it destroyed the joints. So then they said, oh, you can only have three injections per life per joint. And that went on for a little while. And then they had it. They said, oh, no, that's not going to do it. We, we got to go five years. And now it's down to three injections per joint every year. Again, people want certain things, but you can't always have what you want immediately. You have to have a plan. Sleeping, adjustments, cold packs, do the same anti-inflammatory process at a slower rate. So you got to do it a longer period of time. That's the goal, anti-inflammatory. Sleep lets your body to recover. All of these things in terms of body shape, stress factors, um, um, <sighs> lifestyle choices, it doesn't have to be complicated. It has to be able to be communicated, you know? The idea is, what am I doing to get to where I want to be? You know, my Marine gal who I adore, she's working so hard. I'm so proud of her. You know, she's really doing everything she needs to do to age better. She tells me that. It makes me happy when I hear that. You know, you have to have a plan. People say, I don't want to be in a nursing home. Okay. Tell me what you're going to do not to be in a nursing home. My kids say when, to me, when you go to the home, I got a home. I don't need another home. How am I going to stay in my home by doing my P90X for $99, by listening to my wife and eating gluten-free, maybe sneaking a little on the side, but 90% now gluten-free, um, by getting my chiropractic adjustment and reducing the inflammatory response, by taking my supplementation based on my findings and my chemistry, you know, 
I take niacin because of a, a C-reactive protein, lipoprotein A. Anybody with cardiovascular dysfunction should look into that or come and talk to me about it. You know, if you have an HDL that's in the 30s, that's too low. I Forget the LDL. Worry about the HDL. That's another thing. You know, look at the HDL and get that HDL with exercise and, and uh, niacin up to 45, 50, 55, right? And if you're worried about the LDL, then you come in, we do a carotid Doppler, we send you for the carotid Doppler, and we look for the inflammatory response in the, in the vascular system in your neck. Real easy. Dr. Lamar, I want to see if I have vascular insufficiency or, or inflammation in my vascular system, so I'd like to check my blood vessels in my neck. No problem. Give me the script. Real easy. It's like 37 bucks with insurance. Come on, this is, this is 2021. It's not 1930. You know, you, you, people go on YouTube and learn. This is the whole thing. You, you know, you need to fix the dryer, you go to YouTube. I want you to learn how to fix yourself. That's why we're giving you the data on these slides so that you can go to them and resource, use them as resources, right? Hormone control. Um, the idea of you got to have findings, you know? Um, I would just talk to one lady today and she said that her father-in-law was passing from prostate and bone cancer. And I said, well, did your husband check himself? How does he check himself? Well, a blood test, PSA. He should know that. See, that's the idea of communication and that's about findings. And you can change, as you change your chemistry, you change your hormone levels. As you eat that chicken noodle soup, you change your hormone levels. As you do that Pilates or, or you do the power plate, you change hormone levels, which is going to change your whole entire body. You, as you eat that anti-inflammatory, making sure you have that protein in there, which gives amino acids, going to change hormone levels. Again, see how they're all connected. And when you do this anti-inflammatory diet and you get an adjustment and you go to the medical doctor and you go to the cardiologist and you communicate, all of a sudden you don't have the autoimmune diseases, or if you do, they're minimized. You can have problems. You just have to make them small and make your response to inflammation larger so you overcome it, right? Again, zero to 20, you grow, 20 to 30, you mature, 30 on you start to change. And so inflammation in, in a childhood experience to me is more detrimental than the inflammation in, from poor diet maybe after 30, you know? That's why I tried with my children not to eat on the children's menu. Their palate is fairly large. They know to eat a protein, carb, and a fat, right? We don't do soda. We do water. Again, they don't realize they're doing anti-inflammatory. I just tell them, you know, how much to chiropractic you get? Four times a year, change the season, the Asian way. God, if every parent had their child adjusted every four times a year, the health would be tripled. I mean, it's that easy. But nobody ever thinks about that, you know? And grandparents, you're a grandparent. Tell your, tell your children. They should go to the chiropractor. How come? Because you care about the kids. You know, you don't think my grandmother cared about me? Of course. Drove me crazy until the woman passed. I was 47 years old. And I loved every minute of it, right? She was trying to be anti-inflammatory with me, teaching me about how to stay healthy so that I get to that 100. So again, use this lecture and this talk as, as a resource to pass on. If you have questions, it's a phone call. Again, 30 years of doing this, I want you guys healthy. I want you to understand. You know, I want you to understand what it takes. You know, a lot of people know um, I had cancer when I was young and it changed my whole life. You know, that's how I got into chiropractic. And the one thing about cancer is once you have cancer, you always have cancer. I mean, that, that's in the literature, that's my feeling. So I treat myself according so I don't have a bump in the road. I don't want another bump. I got enough little bumps. But now at 59, I'm doing better than I was at 29. And I hope to do better at 69 than I did at 39. You know, because I'm learning more and I'm working harder and I'm communicating to my doctors and I'm making them work for me. You know, the, the first cardiologist I went to, he, he didn't do what I wanted. I tried to communicate. He fell on deaf ears. I fired him. I got another one. Happened to be his partner. My wife said, were you embarrassed? No, I'm paying him. It wasn't free. It's not socialized. It's not England. You know, I want people to understand that you are important. And a few concepts, anti-inflammatory, from mechanical health, seeing a chiropractor. Remember, there's that mechanical chemical surgical doctor. We're the mechanical guys. Seeing the mechanical doctor for anti-inflammatory, getting the nerve health. 
eating anti-inflammatory, doing some exercise anti-inflammatory, all of these things, sleep anti-inflammatory and minimizing the poor behaviors, right? That's the way you fight chronic disease. That's the way you win. That's the way when you're 105 and you're still around and the kids are going, oh my God, when is he going? You know, that's the payback. That's the wonderful part of life. And again, I'm always a phone call away. Use this as a, as a resource. Uh, come on, on all these podcasts. I mean, they, they might be a little silly, but they're packed full of information and not 1930s, 2021. We should be demanding more from our healthcare system right? Look, they made this vaccine in a matter of a couple of months, you know, and yet chronic disease is killing us. You know, I mean, that's ridiculous. We have to ask more from our providers and be more accountable. Make your decisions and live with your decisions. I'm living with all my decisions. I'm, I'm proud to know that where I am and what I'm doing and where I'm going. That's what healthcare is about. That's anti-inflammatory. Again, thank you for this uh, time. If you have any questions, come on in. Mr. Walker and I will, will address any concerns you have. And again, it's been a pleasure and hope to see you on the next podcast. Thanks again.